Over an aerial view of the Life Sciences Building, text reads, University of Dundee, School of Life Sciences. Seeing new medicines in action. A scientist, standing at a lectern, presents research to a room of others. A montage shows a number of scientists working in a variety of labs. Many medicines work by blocking its target called proteins from working. To design new medicines, we need to understand how they stick to these proteins. The molecular interactions team use various techniques that tell us in some detail where and with how much force the medicine sticks. This helps us understand how changes to the medicine might improve how they work. In a lab, a scientist works at a computer beside a large white machine. Surface Plasnon Resonance, SPR for short, is a technique that helps us understand how potential new medicines stick to the protein target. A white cartridge with a small gold square. The protein target is placed upon a gold surface and tiny amounts of medicine are passed over it. The scientist loads the cartridge into the machine. He opens a panel on the side of the machine and removes a metal tray. He attaches a 384 well plastic plate to the tray, then places it back into the panel. If a medicine binds to the target, this is detected by the instrument. The information collected lets us understand how fast and how strongly the medicine sticks. Our instrument allows us not only to study one medicine at a time, but also test several thousand potential medicines. The scientist closes the panel door. Inside, a blue light turns on. On the computer, the scientist reviews data. These experiments are used to identify new start points and to provide information to improve new medicines. Elsewhere, two scientists study a 3D model displayed on a computer screen. Another method is X-ray crystallography that allows us to see a medicine bound to its target. This allows us to suggest changes to improve binding. The first step is to grow crystals of the target. We use robots to do this. A scientist uses a robot to inject liquid into a 96-well plate. She then moves the plate to a fridge. They can set up hundreds of individual crystallization experiments. The crystals can take days, weeks, or months to appear. A visualization of the crystallization process, which shows the crystals expanding. The scientist takes the plate and places it into an Echo 550 machine. The machine flips the 96-well plate upside down. Using an instrument similar to a very expensive inkjet printer, we then add our potential medicines directly into the crystallization drops containing our crystals. The other scientist harvests the crystals using a microscope and a delicate tool. The scientists then remove the crystal loops from a container of liquid nitrogen and place them in a canister. The soaked crystals are harvested in loops, typically only 100 microns across, and are stored under liquid nitrogen. This preserves the crystals while in storage and reduces damage when being exposed to x-rays during data collection. Once safely stored, the crystals can be sent to another research facility that has a machine called a synchrotron. Over an aerial view of a donut-shaped building, text reads, Copyright of Diamond Light Source Limited 2021. It uses powerful x-rays to see the medicine bound to its target. We can control this machine and collect the data using a computer in our lab in Dundee. In a dry lab room, a scientist works on a computer. Elsewhere, two scientists work in another lab. Not all medicine targets can be grown as crystals, so we use another method. Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, NMR, spectroscopy instead. An NMR spectrometer. In another lab, one of the scientists draws clear liquid into a pipette. She deposits the liquid into a tube. She then takes a thin tube and places it into a blue holder, then places the holder on a rack. We use a machine called an NMR spectrometer to do this work. It allows scientists to see the shape of a potential new medicine. To see the shape, we need to place the new medicine inside the machine. First, we dissolve it in a liquid called a solvent. It is then added to a container and placed into a holder so it can be loaded into the machine. The other scientist adds a number of these long containers, in their blue holders, to a rack attached to the NMR spectrometer. 
a small, metal claw grabs one of the containers and lifts it up before moving it and inserting it into a red slot. Inside is a very powerful magnet which is used to create a magnetic field. This field is changed when anything is placed in it. These changes let us see what the medicine looks like. The magnet is cooled to almost minus 269 degrees Celsius with liquid helium and nitrogen to allow it to work. The scientists connect a large canister to the machine. At a computer, they study a line graph and inspect a 3D model. The machine needs to be regularly filled to maintain this temperature. Here you can see liquid nitrogen being added. Once the new medicine is in the machine, it can take between minutes to days to study the shape. It depends on what the scientist is wanting to look at. The results are then sent to a computer for further study. These different methods help scientists to improve a potential new medicine to make it work better. The scientist at the lectern gestures as he presents to the room. Other scientists in the room converse. The two scientists, who had been working with the NMR spectrometer, participate in the conversation. This has allowed our scientists to make potential medicines for diseases, such as cancer, infectious diseases and neglected tropical diseases, like malaria and visceral leishmaniasis. A black letter W appears over text to form the Welcome logo. Text below reads, supported by the Welcome Institutional Strategic Support Fund awarded to University of Dundee. A blue and white crest appears beside blue text to form the University of Dundee logo.